Hi there. So today I want to show you how to use custom font with GroovePage. So my name is Jeff. I'm always looking to help. So if you have any question, please post it below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, just uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, like uh, the video if you like it. So what we have here, currently GroovePage support only a limited set of font, as you can see on the right. Uh, font can be defined at the site level, so be, by the menu of the site setting that I will show you later. It can be defined at the page level and it can be defined at the element level. Usually we will define at the site level the font that you want and you will override for a specific page or element in order to have uh, the look and feel that you want. So if we want to have custom font and groove page, we need to, uh, we have two solutions. First, we can wait to Groove Digital to add the feature. It will come at uh, some point probably in the future. If you don't want to want to, want to wait, we can use a workaround, uh, but you have to know the limitation of that workaround, okay? So uh, the workaround that we have uh, let you define the font that you want at the page level, at the site level. You uh, Unfortunately, you will not see the font in the designer, but you will see the font in the preview, uh, in the preview mode and on the published site. Also, uh, you can override the default font in at the page level at and at the element level. So let's look into it. So right now I have uh, a default site. So as you can see, if I do save and I click preview, you will see that it's pretty, it's look pretty the same actually, okay? If we want to add a custom font, you can go into Google and search, for example, for Google font, okay? This will uh, lend you to this site here. <clears throat> In this site, you will can select the font that you want. So for example, if I want to use this font here, I can select the font and I will use here the select this style to look at uh, the code that we want to have for our workaround. The first thing that we need to do is to copy and paste this code actually right here, like that. And we need to put, as I said, we can override, you can define actually the font at the site level. So the site level will be here in the site setting, or you can define it at the page level, actually in the edit setting here. So for my example, I will work at the site level. So for example, I came here, I do site setting. I will go into the include in head box and paste the link that I uh, copy and paste from that site. The second thing that I need to do is to uh, select the font family here. So how you will apply this um, this special font is by using a, a custom ID. So we, we have two ways of uh, defining the uh, font for actually to apply this, the, this, the CSS. You can do it with a dot like this, so dot, for example, my fonts, and this will uh, represent uh, a CSS class, or you can do it with uh, an ID. So we will use an ID for now because this is the, the way that it works best um, in Groove page right now, I will show you. So we will do this, we will paste the code here. So this will say that if it finds a text highlight, so an ID that is look like this, it will go uh, and apply that font. So I will save this for now. I will copy and paste this text here. And in my use case right now, what I want to do, I want to, that paragraph here to be highlighted with uh, actually to be a, a special font, okay? So what you can do, you can come to custom attribute here and we will use the element ID attribute here. We'll paste that here. So this will make a link between the text box here and the CSS code that we had previously. Currently, this one and this one are not really reliable, so they, they are not uh, linked back. So in the editor, if you save and come back, it, it doesn't work that well. So the, the way of working will be better that way actually for now. 
So you can do save. If I do publish, you see that my font here change, but you see that it's not, it doesn't look like the one here. Even if I do a refresh, you see that the editor is kind of not aware of that, uh, that, of that CSS. So this is how you can override this. If I came here and I add a custom ID here, like that, and I click Save, and I do a preview, you will see that this headline now is uh, with a special font, actually. Another way of doing or to working with this actually that will be more uh, structure is that if, for example, you want all the heading to be uh, a, a specific type of font. So for example, here, as you can see, I have two times the heading here, I have a text. When we look uh, and when we want to know how to target that, you can go to inspect and you see that, that here that we have a H2. So this is something more bit advanced, but what you can do actually is that you can come here in the site setting. We here target a specific ID that we define on the section, but we can also target every H2 or H1 or H3. Uh, and this will I like this will apply the font to these uh, to this section, for example. So for if I come here, I save and I click. So you see we don't really see it here, but if I click here, you will see that all my two headings are now uh, with the special font that I selected. So this is uh, this is the way that you can apply at large, uh, for example, the specific header. And if I came here, you will see that my custom attribute are empty. So so it's not the fact that uh, I add an ID here; it's the fact that I selected the H2. So uh, that's it. So that's it. So this is how you can define uh, the CSS override for uh, a specific site and you can play around with this. Hope it's helped. Have a good day. Bye-bye.